Hi, my name is Alex Dolphin, and welcome back to another episode of Ex Ante. Today we're going to discuss the case Burger King vs. Rudswick. This case is heard in the Supreme Court of the United States in the year 1985. Let's go ahead and jump into the facts of the case. Burger King is the plaintiff, Rudswick is the defendant. Uh, Burger King is a large fast food operation. Um, basically, they allow people to franchise Burger King restaurants and own their own Burger King. Um, these people that are franchisees now, what they do is they pay Burger King on a monthly basis uh, for a license for information and for the license to use the Burger King um, logo and the Burger King name. So Rudswick was a franchisee of Burger King. He opened up a Burger King restaurant in Michigan. Um, Rudswick had to sign a franchise agreement with Burger King, which basically said, you know, you'll pay us these monthly fees. Uh, the important part of the franchise agreement for this case is that there was a choice of law uh, clause, which basically said this contract is uh, going to be governed by Florida law. This contract is entered into in Miami, Florida, which is where Burger King headquarters are. Okay, so Rudswick falls behind on his franchise payments to Burger King. Burger King obviously wants some money for the back payments, and then they want an injunction because they don't want Rudswick to be able to continue selling burgers, selling Whoppers um, underneath the Burger King name if he's not paying the monthly fees, right? So they file a suit uh, in Florida Federal District Court. Now, Rudswick um, objects to this suit on grounds of personal jurisdiction. He says that the Florida Federal District Court does not have personal jurisdiction over him. His argument is that he was a franchisee in Michigan, not one in Florida, um, and notions of fair play and substantial justice, those are two keywords from the international shoe test, um, show that the due process clause does not afford Burger King the opportunity to exercise jurisdiction um, over Rudswick in this case. So his argument is that it would be too difficult for him to get to Florida Federal District Court, it would be too expensive for him to get witnesses there, um, and he wouldn't be afforded due process under the law if he had to defend himself in Florida federal district court. Uh, it's important to note that Florida does have a long arm statute that Burger King invokes here. Um, the long arm statute allows the Florida, uh, the state of Florida to exercise jurisdiction over non-residents um, on breach of contract claims. So essentially it's perfect for this situation. They invoke the long arm statute. So that box is checked. And the question before the court is due process. Um, is exercise of jurisdiction by the Flo federal Florida district court um, in accordance with due process um, under the Constitution. The trial court says, um, yes, it is. Uh, uh, you need to get here to Florida to defend yourself against Burger King, Rudswick. Um, the uh, Court of Appeals reverses that, and they say, no, you know, this isn't fair play. There's not substantial justice in forcing Rudswick to come out to Florida to defend himself. Their main argument hinges upon um, Rudswick never went to Florida. Rudswick never dealt directly with the corporate offices in Florida. He dealt with uh, basically a district office in Michigan. So for all Rudswick really should have known, um, you know, his his interaction with Burger King was governed in Michigan. That's all he ever interacted with Burger King was in Michigan. Um, so they find an argument by Rudswick to be persuasive. Um, and they say that, you know, Florida, you don't have jurisdiction um, over Rudswick. Only Michigan would. Now, Burger King's obviously not too pleased about this, and you could see why, because they have franchisees all over the, the country, and they just want to litigate in Florida. Much easier for them, much more, much more cost-effective. So they appeal this to the, the Supreme Court. Uh, the Supreme Court grants cert, and what they do is they consider the due process question. They consider, um, is it fair, um, is it just to force Rudsvik to come to Florida to defend himself? Now, the, the majority opinion says, yes, it is. Um, the Florida federal court has jurisdiction over Rudswick. Now, the main thing they're focusing on here is that um, it, it's a key magic word in that purposeful availment. Rudswick purposefully availed himself of Florida law when he signed the contract that said this contract would be governed by Florida law. Because the contract says that, they say that it's not on a face enough to prove that Rudswick subjected himself and purposefully availed himself um, to jurisdiction in Florida. But what they say is that is some evidence that he contemplated future contact, contacts with Florida and that he invoked the benefits of Florida law by entering into a contract with a Florida corporation, Burger King Corporation. So they hold for Burger King. They say that Florida can exercise jurisdiction. I mean, it's a win for Burger King. 
There is a, a dissent um, by Justice Stevens, which says that this is not fair and there's not justice in forcing Rudzvik to come to Florida to defend himself. He doesn't have the money. Um, he's sympathetic to that about Rudzvik. And he's also sympathetic to the fact that Rudzvik never went to Florida. He never dealt directly with a Florida uh, corporation. He never went to the Burger King headquarters. He just dealt with the district office in Michigan. And so, you know, he wasn't really adequately on notice. So, uh, the dissent devalues the contract and the clause in the contract and basically just takes the pragmatic approach and looks at the real situation that's before the court. Whereas the, the majority really does emphasize that contract and, and emphasizes the purposeful availment um, of Rudzvik um, in using that contract and in operating a Burger King franchise um, when the headquarters of Burger King was in Miami, Florida. So... That's the case. Um, I want to think a little bit um, and just have a brief discussion on personal jurisdiction in the age of coronavirus and how that might change personal jurisdiction going forward. Um, so in International Shoe, um, the court talks about substantial justice and fair play as being two reasons um, that the due process clause is important uh, because people should be able to um, defend themselves in places where you know they have access to defend themselves. They shouldn't have to go all around the nation if they don't have access to that court, if they don't have the money to go to that court. Um, and it really just becomes you know difficult for people to defend themselves if they have to travel far from home. Now, what we've seen a lot of courts move to during uh, this pandemic is Zoom or telephone, you know, remote court hearings. And if that's the case, does that devalue, does that de-emphasize um, any type of injustice that would be committed by, you know, in this instance, forcing Rudzvik to submit to Florida jurisdiction, right? He can just hop on a Zoom call. He could just dial in on his phone and he's there. He doesn't have to travel. doesn't cost him any money. His witnesses can just be called in via Zoom. Um, now, there is still an argument that there it, it's difficult for him to submit to jurisdiction in Florida, maybe because he'd have to hire, you know, an attorney that's more familiar with Florida law, and that could be an additional expense to him. But one of the key facets of it being uh, unjust to force someone to travel to another jurisdiction is the cost. I mean, if Zoom just eliminates that, if uh, remote court hearings just eliminate that, are we going to see an evolution um, in personal jurisdiction to allow people to be sued in many more forums than they would have been sued in in the past? And I think it will be an interesting space to see how this develops uh, in the future and what the court does with this new technology that allows hearings you know, all over the world. It is miraculous and it would allow, seems like, more efficiency in the courts if we permitted this uh, you know, remote um, hearings to continue um, in, in the judiciary. So. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you'd like to see more, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And I hope you have a nice rest of your day. Bye-bye.